Hello, and welcome to the very first ever This Week in iPad iPad Meetup. An arousing <laughs> success it's been. Yes. Uh, thousands and upon thousands of you scattered to the four corners of the globe are joining us today, uh, including Zach Taylor from our Vancouver Meetup. Uh, how are you doing, Zach? Good, how are you doing, Lon? I'd like to stress that Zach is not at all the only person that got in touch with me with Skype info so that we could have them call into the show. There were literally <laughs> thousands of people. He was just the best looking. So I said, Zach, you're on. Uh, Zach, you're, you, you're calling us from your, is it your restaurant? It was a restaurant, yeah. am I correct? Um, I do. It, yeah, no, no, it is. Is a restaurant. I do uh, international marketing, so I travel quite a bit. So when the iPad came out, it was a must-have for me. So we have a school actually located in Spokane, Washington, and one of our marketers there got me the iPad. Uh, I've been traveling with it for about six weeks now. And one of my other jobs is that I own and operate uh, a restaurant here in Vancouver. Um, yeah, and uh, I mean, I've been watching uh, Jason Calacanis uh, for a while now with This Week in Startups, but I first got in touch with him on This Week in, uh, in Tech, and I just I just really like him. I'm on Jason Nation. I was just reading his latest uh, email, and I mean, I just really like what you guys are doing, and, and This Week in iPad is just uh, really opening a lot of doors for me. I wish there were some people in Vancouver that, that had an iPad <laughs> that could come and hang out with me here today, but Aww. whatever, I, you know, that's all right, that's all right. <laughs> so you were actually telling me on email earlier that uh, that you, you're not finding a lot of Canadian iPad enthusiasts. Would that would that be accurate to say? Um, I mean, I guess so. Uh, it came out May 28th here, so right. I was in the Apple Store on the 29th with a friend, and I mean, there was a ton of people touching it, but I didn't see anybody buying it, hmm. now, and it I haven't seen it out and about. Now, now, why do you think that is? Is it because you can't build igloos, igloos using them, or what? Oh, come on. <laughs> oh. No, okay. seriously, why do you think it uh, is? That... I am, I'm, I'm wearing my Sidney Crosby 740 <laughs> shirt, which is when he uh, got that gold medal there. So Very good, very um, good. No, I, you know, I don't, I don't really know. Um, I mean, the, I think I wrote to you, Lon, today and said, uh, most people come up and just say, oh, it's a giant iPod touch. I'm like... Hmm. Okay, if that's what you think it is, yeah, but look at this. Um, I downloaded a couple books this weekend. I, I don't read a lot of books. I'm into the middle of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. I mean, I'm reading the USA Today. I'm reading a lot of American um, media right now because that's what's out there. Right. But I'm just getting back into it, and every day I'm, I'm picking it up. I'm doing stuff. I'm doing my work email. I work for a couple hours in the restaurant every morning while I'm doing restaurant stuff. I can also do my international marketing at the same point. I mean, uh, it just has everything that I, I possibly want. And uh, my uh, full disclosure here, I'm not an Apple fanboy. I don't have a Mac. I have an iPhone and I have an iPad and, and that's it. I mean, uh, so, me, yeah, so just for comparison, do you find people talking about Android devices or anticipating Android tablets when they come out or? Not really, I mean. Not at all, there's I, no love I, for the tablet. Yeah. I, I think here in Vancouver, we're in a little bit of a strange kind of market. Um, even Android phones, I, I actually held my first one just on, on Saturday. I'd never seen it um, in use before. Uh, iPhone has a lot of the market, as well as uh, Blackberry, as far as smartphones go. And I think that most of the people that have the Blackberry, it's because they're on those exchange servers and their company says, oh, here's your phone, this is all you get. Um, and I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I just don't see what the BlackBerry does. Uh, Apple and the, and the iPhone just has so many more services and apps. I mean, that app store is amazing. Uh, I haven't taken a look at the Android uh, app store just because I haven't had access to it. Right. Yeah, I think what we might be seeing, it might be almost a little bit like, I don't want to say time travel, but we're sort of looking at a different point in the development yeah. of the culture of the tablet. Because it was like that in America. When the iPad ver first came out, for the first week or so, I mean, everybody was fascinated, wanted to touch it, wanted to see it, wanted to play Plants vs. Plants versus Zombies. But I think I heard that a lot, too, of like, well, it's just an iPhone well, or an iPod that's a bit bigger. If you go back and watch This Week in Startups, like yeah. a week or two before the iPad came out, 
we actually, you, me, Jason Calcanis, I, I mean, you might have been there, I'm not sure who else was in the room, yeah. but anyway, mm -hmm. we were all talking about, you know, what we thought the tablet devices were going to be used for, and there was a lot of, yeah, I don't know, it may I, not be. I was, I was a leading, it's very yeah. ironic I've come to host this week yeah. at iPad, because I was very skeptical before it came out. Uh, you know, it was a basically lot of like, well, what do I need this for? I got a laptop, I got a phone, I mean, uh, how much, how many different things do I need to Twitter yeah. from? And and I think it was, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of what Zach is actually saying is the, um, the sort of utility of it is not maybe that intuitive. You need to play around with it for a week, and then you're like, oh, I can sort of do everything I would normally do on a computer from this thing. Yeah. And it's it's very pliable, and you don't you don't maybe get that at first. So I'm almost wondering if in a couple weeks, can it, can, Canadians will have their aha moment. Right. And they'll be like, oh, you know what? I can I can look up back bacon recipes on here, and it's uh, it's amazing for that. I'm sorry, I had I had. To. You almost. Had an <laughs> okay, it's okay. I man. almost did. You know. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, maybe in maybe in Toronto it's different. Maybe they're all out and and using it. For me, I travel a lot, so when I walk onto the plane and I'm just carrying my little side bag with this and my headphones, and I can write a hundred emails in a five hour flight. And, and do work and I don't have to type on the smaller screen. I mean, for me, that's just easeability. I don't have to be lugging a power bar and all that stuff with me when I uh, no, used to take my laptop. I mean, yeah, just flat down for traveling, for, for marketers. I think this is the way to go. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't see why we're skeptical about it up here. Hmm. I mean, they'll, they'll figure out what it's all about. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> See, I eased off the Canada jokes. I, just, I made my last one. one. Last I made one. my one Canada last, joke, and I was done. Last yeah. one. I got it. I saw Strange Brew recently. Come oh, that's why. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, so thanks, Zach. Hang, hang out because we're gonna just do news and stuff, and uh, you know, you may you sure. may want to jump in. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll talk about. It. We got a few questions that uh, actual viewers, shocking though it may seem, submitted. So I want to jump in, and we'll All show right. off a couple apps we're playing around with sure. lately, too. Just give people an idea where we're going to go. But uh, I wanted to talk, obviously, huge Apple news today. So we got we got to talk about it. Uh, the uh, Steve note at the Worldwide Developers Conference was just this morning. So we got a ton of a ton of big announcements. We'll first talk about iPhone 4, of course, being the big one. Uh, it will go on sale June 24th. Pre-orders start June 15th, only a week away. Yeah, it's pretty it's close. It's amazing how quickly we get the announcement to the product in our hands from Apple. It, it feels unprecedented. Maybe yeah. that's just me. I don't ever recall hearing, like, you hear about the product, and then it's, you're holding it a month later. Uh, it's been, they're touting it as the biggest leap since the original iPhone went on sale in 2007. Uh, let's go through the hardware changes very quickly. Sharper display, 5 megapixel camera up from 3, 9.3 millimeters. So it's 24% thinner than the yeah. iPhone 3G, which is huge. That was, kind of, that was kind of, I was actually interested that they did not choose to make greater bat or put greater battery life into it. They are. They that, did that as well. That's oh, coming. Okay. I, that's I coming. Miss, I miss it's twenty four percent there and it has a bigger battery, which means they're they're saying you'll get seven hours of talk time, six hours of three G browsing, or three hundred hours on standby. Oh wow. So it's a it's a big uh, So it's a, thinner and it lasts longer. Thinner and lasts longer. Uh, it's got the A four chip in it, which is the same microprocessor that powers the iPad. Yep. Uh, video camera in the front, uh, which is going to enable probably the biggest software change, uh, FaceTime video chat. Chat uh, on the iPhone. Basically, the thing about <laughs> face, Goody. here's the thing, like, it's, it's obviously a huge leap to be able to do like a Skype type yeah. call. It's not Skype, it's a Skype type call from your iPhone, but it's now, for now, it's only going to work with other people who have iPhone 4s, and it's only via Wi-Fi. They said they're gonna work on it, they've gotta work this out with different so when carriers. You, when you say it's only via Wi-Fi, do you and I have to be connected via Wi-Fi? Or no, no. It's, we both have to be on Wi-Fi I have to be connected. connected via Wi-Fi with my iPhone. You can be somewhere else, but you also, also have, have to be connected, connected via Wi-Fi wi okay. on your iPhone, but we don't have to be in the same location. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, so yeah, that, that's, it, it's cool, but they're not. They haven't exactly like reinvented the wheel. And it's another case of this open versus closed system where it's not like you can use Skype on it. You have to use right. iPhones proprietary software called FaceTime, and everybody else you're talking to has to have that too. It seems like it's it's getting there, but it's not there. Uh, 32 gigs is going to sell for 299. The 16 gig version is going to be 199. That's pretty nice. Which is a, a definitely yeah. a nice price yeah. point after the other, the last generation. Uh, it's for sale at Best Buy and Walmart. And here's the, it's got a free Netflix app, which is going to be awesome. You watch Netflix on your iPhone. And here's the big one: a gyroscope for motion input. So games already are using the altimeter, which is kind of cool. You can get that. This is yeah. this is really the accelerator. That's what I meant. Uh, this is really the next level, even of of way more kind of Nintendo. Wii sort of motion ability that's going to add a whole layer to mm. games. 
So uh, out of all that, uh, what, what would you guys say is the most exciting feature, or the thing that makes this seem like something you want to buy, if there's anything? And uh, do you think the iPad has blunted a lot of your enthusiasm for the iPhone? Because that's how I feel. Yeah, well, I, well, the one thing the iPad's still lacking is a front-facing camera. And that's right. the one thing I think all of us thought that it would have, because the idea of being able to um, video conference with people yeah, on your pad I've always been sort of, like, I, I've gone on this note on as that, We've had, iChat has had you know an iSight. All my iMacs have had a front-facing camera forever. I don't know anyone that uses it at all. Like uh, maybe a Skype call like this every now and then, but I don't know anyone who, like. Well, they... here's why. Because or I in my th my I right. theorize um, if it's a if it's the device is mobile, then it becomes more interesting, right? Because then you're like, hey, I'm at the uh, this X Y Z thing's going on. Have a look, you know. And you're on on the phone with your your family, yeah. your girlfriend, yeah. or whatever. You can like immediately show stuff that's going on out in the real world, which, which you can't like sort of take your computer outside right. and do the same thing. Fair enough. I should, I should add, before we go on with the news, I forgot to mention this at the top of the show. If you want to Skype in and talk to us and ask a question or something, we will be taking Skype calls. Not that, Zach, I'm not enjoying having you here. You're, you're a lovely person. I just, if anybody else is actually having another meetup, uh, wants to talk to us, you can just go into the uh, chat room. Uh, Roberta, who works for us, is in there. Her name is This Week. She's been talking to you guys all along. Uh, ping her. Tell her your Skype name and she can let the team know and you can actually Skype in yourself. So if anybody's watching this and wants to ask a question, wants to chat with us, uh, we are encouraging that. It's, yeah, a, it's that kind of a meeting. It's not like a traditional show. We want to talk to people. Uh, and the other thing we should mention is you should tweet now and let people know uh, you're watching the show, just say, come watch uh, the iPad meetup this weekend.com. Uh, we will look at the end of the show for people who have tweeted that and we will give one of them a $50 Apple Store card. Well, indeed. For yeah. whatever you want, put it towards your new iPhone 4. Yeah. Put it towards your iPad, anything else you guys want. So uh, before the end of the show, we'll probably wrap up in 30 minutes here or so. Uh, before the end of the show, tweet out thisweekend.com, iPad meetup, any combination thereof, uh, and we will pick a winner. OK, so sorry about that. Back to the conversation. Wanted to make sure we, uh, we had yeah, gotten sure. that in. Um, so yeah, I, I, I was just saying, I feel like now that I have the iPad, I, I spend all of my leisurely time with the iPad as opposed to the phone now. It has a few indispensable things on my phone. I like being able to tweet when I'm just out and about. Yeah. Uh, I play My Town on it, so you can't, uh, that's not, uh, I guess you could put that on the iPad, but uh, that's mainly for the iPhone. Uh, little things like that, but I, I really can't build up the same level of excitement about new iPhone features because I'm so married to this sort of new device that... I just think of as being my go-to device now. Um, I because I've always I've opted for the Wi-Fi version of iPad. So there's a lot in my that I choose particularly for my phone. Something that I use mobile-wise, whether it be Maps or right. you know, a number of applications, right. there's, which there's make more sense. There's some indispensable stuff, obviously. Uh, but I mean, it's it's something. Whereas I bring my iPad to most places I go, I am never without my phone ever. So and I don't have a 3GS. I've only on a 3G right now. So I'm really really excited. Um, I'd say of the things that excite me the most, it's probably a combination of the build and the, the display. Just early reviews I've seen, it's just like it's hard to stress how wonderful the display looks. Yes, um, it's, it, it was significantly sharper. I mean, yeah. you can see it right away during his demo. I watched the video of the demo right. this morning. Yeah. It's immediately visible yeah. that it's brighter, sharper, clearer. Almost the comparison would be like DVD to Blu-ray. Like we're, yeah. we're, we're moving in that direction. Um, yeah. So that's what I'm excited about. You? Yeah, I'm just I'm camera. <laughs> For the, the camera. camera. Yeah. I still think that that's the killer app. How about you, it. Zach? You you an iPhone guy? Uh, yeah, totally. Uh, I have a 3GS. I got it uh, as soon as it came out here. Now, for me, again, like Jacob said, um, front-facing camera. Yeah, not too big of a deal. This is probably my first <laughs> Skype call like this I've ever done. Um, just wait, you guys all flat. Soon. What's that? Oh, I was just gonna say, you guys will all see. Never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Pay no attention to me. Go ahead. Um, I mean, for me, I'll I'll definitely upgrade my wife's phone. She's on a 3G, so she definitely needs a new one. The battery life is something for me. Um, I don't know what I can talk about here or not, but I have a jailbroken iPhone because uh, I don't like to pay for the 3G twice. Jobs is sending police to your, uh, the, the police are going to down the door any minute now. I mean, I can tether my iPhone to my computer, but I can't tether it to my iPad just because you sell 3G subscriptions. Yeah, I have a problem with that. Anyways, um, but no, it looked really cool today. I mean, the flash, I don't know why it wasn't on the phone to begin with. I don't know why the front-facing camera wasn't there. I mean, there's so some really new iterations of it. 
but I mean, that's the business model and I understand that and you got to respect that because he makes a lot more money than I do. A bit. A little bit. A bit. <laughs> a little bit. A little he's, doing, bit. He's, doing, he's doing all right, Steve. <laughs> Steve-o. He's doing just fine. Uh, okay, so let's let's move on to some of the iOS four changes. They're changing it. It used to be the iPhone OS. Now right. it's the iOS because it's the iPad as well. Uh, developers are getting the new software on Monday. The public will get upgrades on June twenty first. Uh, the biggest change, as far as uh, Steve seems concerned, is the iAd mobile ad platform. Now you can click on ads all you want without leaving your favorite apps. Yay. Delightful. More Fantastic. easier uh, to. Uh, Cover it, your entire app experience it, with ads. It is basically. a nice thing for developers, and it sure. conference was for developers, so yes. give them a little bit. Right. Um, <laughs> so multitasking, you'll be able to run multiple apps at once. That's yes. huge. Now, now, Steve claims that it's multitasking done right. That's what the ads I've been seeing say. Right. Yes. Do we know what right is versus like, why did Android do it right? Presumably, well, that's a shot across Android's bow, right. which has been touting the fact that they've had multitasking from the beginning. Right? The, so idea, you, the idea being that Android, you need a, really a task manager, the figure out what, what's using memory and what where, and that if it's very easy for a rogue app to either A, drain the battery or drain your RAM, and then you have to restart the computer, or have a task manager to figure out, oh, this is using 80% of my RAM, I need to kill it. Whereas Apple's saying you don't need a task manager with us, it figures everything out seamlessly for you. Interesting. It will never, it, it can't drain the battery that much. Obviously it can't, it's not, it's gonna drain it a little bit, but it's not gonna drain it that bad. So what We've actually they... heard this complaint a lot on This Week in Android, where yeah. someone will accidentally leave their Android device on, uh, while they're you know, basically have a map yeah. running or something uh, like that, and yeah. so as the signal gets weaker, the the phone starts working harder to try to you know find the signal again. And it, if you go into subway or something like that, yeah. by the time you get up the other end, your yeah. Android device is done. Well, so how would Apple counteract that? Just not let you open more apps than you could run at once, sensibly. Something, uh, it, doing that, or by gracefully, um, if it's like, all right, this map app has been using a lot of. Try, like it's trying you want to, to close it or? trying to hard or closing it down, but remembering where it's at. So mm. the one downfall is when you launch it back up, it might have to think a little bit longer to right. place it place it back. Yeah. But at the same time, it didn't kill your battery. This is it's probably better. a better way to do it. I have to say. Yeah. 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 Well, there you go. Multitasking done right. There you go. Take That's that in. Right. Uh, <laughs> email. You're going to have a unified inbox for multiple Finally. email accounts, which will say, oh, so Thank great. You. And cool. save my life. And threaded email conversations, and you'll be able to go through and delete either the entire thread or specific yeah. emails, which is a, a heaven sent. Uh, folders, you can create folders by dragging apps on top of one another. That's cool, and that would be help, massively help conserve real estate, because this is one of the annoying things, yeah. I think, about the iPhone yeah, and the iPad is the constant, <laughs> oh, where did I put Pandora? and go through eight screens to try to get there. Uh, it's gonna run iMovie. Uh, in terms of the camera software, this probably just applies to the iPhone, at least for now. Uh, you're gonna get five times digital zoom, and you can tap to focus, because it's got the more powerful camera now. Uh, iBook software, this is going to affect iPads. We'll get an update. Uh, it's going to get a PDF reader. You can do bookmarking. You can take notes. Uh, and now iBooks will be on the iPhone and the iPod Touch. And books are interchangeable through all the devices. So I can be reading it in my on my iPad, move it to my iPhone, and pick up right where I left off on the iPhone. Right. That is dope. That's going to be awesome. That is pretty cool. Uh, the final thing I've got written here, Bing is now available for search. Google's the default, but you can set Bing as your default as well. Oh, so very nice. Microsoft uh, getting getting in there, getting in on the iPhone. A little bit. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that, that's all the uh, software updates. There's a few other sort of announcements generally. Uh, Steve said the App Store now has 225,000 programs, 8,500 of which were designed exclusively for the iPad. Uh, Apple gets 15,000 new apps submitted each week. 95% <laughs> of them, Steve says, are approved within seven days. He calls it the most vibrant app community on the planet. I don't know about that seven days claim. Well, no, that's what I was going to say. That, that seems to directly contradict a lot of the first-hand uh, well, anecdote well, you hear. We both have had direct experience with this, and it was no seven but days. But it was early on. I have heard from developers who have submitted recently, and it's about, right, two or three days. It's um, getting there, like, right yeah. now? Yeah. Um, it, it was really bad early on, and I think there's probably still a very, very, very vocal minority uh, touting whenever their app takes a while. But we make sure to let people know. Uh, but from what I've heard, I've heard, I, I don't know, about a dozen or so accounts of people who have submitted an app, and I asked, oh, wow, did you have to wait a month? Said, no, about a week. Wow. So, okay, so that's a dramatic improvement, because it was a month. No. It, it was a yeah. long, much, yeah. six weeks, eight weeks, weeks people yeah. were saying, yeah. 
Uh, iPad apps have been downloaded 35 million times, so the 35 individual downloads since the iPad launched. Uh, 5 million digital books have been sold since the iPad launch, which is 22% of all ebook sales in that time, so brand new, and it's dominate, dominant at this point, 22%, not a majority, but now, do we know, it's only been we don't know, We don't know how many people are using their Kindle app on their iPhone no, and no, iPad no, no, devices no, no. to read, you know, basically. I'm assuming when he well, says 5 so. million digital books have been sold since the iPad launch, he's referring to the iBooks Yeah, app I would assume that that's he what he wouldn't means. have the records right. for the Kindle app, so that is just iBooks. Um, so, yeah, if you add in Kindle apps, the Kindle books that people are downloading on their iPad, it's probably more than 22%. Yeah. So, in the first, considering it's only two months old, that's d er, massive. Well, that's, that's, I mean, the Kindle, using the Kindle app on my iPad for books uh -huh. is how I consume books on my iPad. Yes. But I don't use my actual Kindle device at all anymore. No, now it's the Kindle The on Kindle the on iPad. the iPad, yeah. yeah. I will say I'd love to try it, but somebody else was using this iPad before me, so I have to call Amazon uh, yeah. and sit on the phone with them to re-license uh, it, which is irritating. But but I'll, I'll do it. I've just been lazy. Uh, the final little mini announcement stat, uh, the iPad job says will be available in 19 countries by the end of July. It's 11 now hmm. so it's going to go more international uh, and that was that was basically uh, the all the iPad news from the WWDC today uh, obviously a lot a lot going on um, so what did you guys think overall of this as a sort of move forward for Apple was it were these the announcements you were expecting is it odd there wasn't an OS X uh, discussion at all there was no new news about desktops at well, all I think that Apple had to basically make uh, a big splash today had to make a big announcement um, because there's a lot of news coming out of the Android world. Um, sitting in on This Week in Android, yeah. I've gotten to know, you know just how fast and how far things are going. Uh, Ashley from This Week in Android came by, mm -hmm. showed us her new HTC Evo. It's um, pretty sweet. Very impressive. Big screen. Very, That's the thing that is really bright, vibrant, big screen. Yeah, and basically the thing, yeah, and the thing I was thinking, and you were thinking it probably too, when we were looking at it was, hmm, I don't know. That thing's looking pretty shiny compared to my iPhone. Right. I, I blatantly came out and said, yeah. like, my AT&T contract is almost up. I'm seriously considering making the jump. Still, even with the uh, announcement today, yeah. i got to say, I know I'm on an, uh, the iPad show. Oh, so yeah. I should be more, <laughs> should be more devoted Steve right. fanboy with my black turtleneck. But uh, well, we haven't seen, but you haven't actually held the new iPhone. I haven't yeah. held the new and, iPhone. I've held the and, Evo, you know, yeah. And you've held the Evo. So that's, it's really that visceral or, you know, that, that when you actually are touching and holding the thing, you go, Oh yeah, yeah, now I see. Now yeah. this is like we don't the sharp quality of the picture we've only seen by video. We haven't actually seen it in real life. It may yeah, just be true. incredibly stunning when you're actually seeing it. I'm so. gonna wait. I'll take a look at somebody's and then I'll make my my final decision. I think I I, yeah. I, I will say today's announcement was enough for me to second guess myself. Yes. I was pretty sure. And that's I what was, Apple wanted to do. That was, was my point. I was pretty sure I was going to jump to Android, and now I'm I'm, I'm rethinking because uh, now you won't do it until you go and look at. Well, the you'll battery, now go and look at the new iPhone. I'll be honest. The battery life for me is the biggest iPhone deal breaker. Like that's been when even more so than the crummy AT and T service. That's been something that's really been bugging me <coughs> about the the one but thing that they, I think really bothers are me. Are the Androids the that much better? I've heard comparable at best. Well, no, the, the problem with the Android devices is what we were discussing earlier, yeah. and that the battery tends to get drained through stupid multitasking. Right. Right. Uh, but that, that's the Evo, I thought, was a big jump forward in that. That's what I was hearing, anyway. That the, the, Evo, the Evo 4G yeah. is less of a crazy battery drain than the uh, iPhone. Yeah, my knowledge there. Yeah. My, my experience with Android devices, which, and I wasn't able to play with the Evo, uh, was, is that, one, I've heard the battery is on par or maybe a little bit worse. The but early Android devices, that definitely was the word, that the battery was terrible and worse than the iPhone. And But it's also, for me, it's just been sort of a UI experience and a sort of snappiness that, and this could totally just be, I'm such a Steve Job bias tool that I just refuse <laughs> to actually accept another competitor's phone as good. Yes. Uh, I'll fully admit that. But maybe. It could be. Just maybe. But could, it, could that was that. my mm -hmm. experience. It's just... Whatever it was, the iPhone just felt like a better experience. To Whatever me. phone can prove to me that it's going to be snappy and have the best battery life, like that, all that's like yeah. eighty percent of it for me. Like yeah. there's little fun things I want with a phone, but I just I'm very sick of like I go to the airport and I'm waiting for my plane, and by the time I'm in the air, my phone is dead. Yeah. Like that's happened a bunch of times. Yeah, that's and it's happened. always irritating to me that I have to like constantly be on the go and worried about plugging it in so I can have my phone for the whole day. Because right. like that's if there's ever a test case for when you want your smartphone to work, it's when you're bored and on an airplane yeah. or in an airport. I mean that if it doesn't work then why do I even? Why do I yeah. even have it? I'll just get an Etch-a-Sketch, and it'll keep me busy. <laughs> right. uh, so let's let's move on. Uh, 
Flash, Flash on the iPad, uh, or should I say Flash on the iPad? <laughs> That's how I have it written in my notes. Uh, Adobe has partnered with uh, Gray Stripe on a solution to circumvent Apple's ban on Flash, but only for ads, for allowing advertisers to deliver Flash content on Apple devices. Uh, Gray Stripe will go in, detect the platform, and if it's needed, automatically convert Flash to HTML5 in real time. Okay, so it's not actually putting Flash on yeah. the iPad. It's not putting Flash on the iPad, it's, it's detecting when Flash is being used and immediately swapping it out for HTML5. HTML5. Uh, it's sort of similar in some way. Brightcove has been doing this for video, yeah. basically by converting to MP4 and then embedding uh, with an HTML5 video tag. Uh, similar idea, but this doesn't do the MP4. This actually just converts directly to HTML5. Uh, but it's on Flash-enabled devices like Android phones. There wouldn't be a change. It would just detect that it's bright, sure. capable of running Flash. Wouldn't do anything. Uh, it's similar in design to the iAds implementation. Uh, and a Apple banned this kind of cross-compiling, but only for apps, not for ads. Uh, so this may actually be permissible well, under Apple's terms of service. We'll, we'll see what they have to say about so it. So Steve heard about this today. And well, if it's right. if it's in. If it's on the web, there's nothing they can really do. I mean, it can't. I mean, I suppose they could make a Safari update that would then detect this type of thing and ban right. it. But they could that do that. I mean, be, they have banned this for they, for they really couldn't though, yeah. because they'd have yeah. to they have to ban all HTML5. Yeah, they would. Yeah, which they're not going to do, obviously. So. And from there, I don't think they care. It's like for to them, that's. There, no, that's actually it's not. It's not like they're somehow forcing a Flash component to be loaded in Safari. It's just it's right. serving what they want and to be served. And on top of that, so. I would I would suspect that it's not a full Flash translation. No, that there's a. I mean, there's a lot of things that are done. A lot in of Flash. the action scripting, a lot of the interactivity. Yeah, well, that, that goes to what my question was going to be, which is, and and my understanding is like, please feel free to say this is stupid if it's stupid, but uh, if this works and and it, it's seamless or it's roughly seamless, doesn't this destroy Apple's case against Adobe? I mean, isn't this like, it's not going to crash? No, it well, supports no, it. Because it's, it's what it's serving isn't Flash. That's the whole point. It's right. serving something that, an open standard, and it's serving... But then why couldn't they just allow this for apps as well? Uh, they uh, well, would. The, idea, the idea behind apps is that uh, it's Flash um, compiling, it's a, compiling the Flash to be translated into an app thing, right. which is, they're saying, no, no, you can't do. This is just serving it on a web browser. Um, it's, yeah, so okay. little apples and oranges situation. Fair enough. No pun intended. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but basically it's, it's uh, Apple has notice. forced the world to be HTML5. Right. That's And so they've won. So I would say it's Well, and it's, it's, it's working. In Farmville already, you don't need right. Flash for anymore, which was one of the big cases yeah. where people were like, look, you wouldn't be able to play Farmville, and now you can. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let's move on. 10-inch uh, Samsung Galaxy. We'll talk about that. Uh, rumor has it that Samsung plans to offer 7-inch, 8-inch, and 10-inch models of its new Galaxy Tab device. Uh, the 8-inch will apparently be available in October. The 10-inch is going to follow in December, and both tablets will run on Android. So these are just rumors, uh, but that seems weird, right? I mean, a 7-inch and an 8-inch? What would possibly be the point of that? <laughs> I don't know. That's yeah, really, that is really strange. Very bizarre. Are I just there read that today. I thought, difference in specs? That's the only thing. They, maybe they're, they're, these are all rumors, so yeah. nothing is coming from Samsung. It was the leading Samsung blog posted yeah. this today, and uh, it just seemed bizarre to me. Like, I get a 7-inch and a 10-inch. Yeah. I don't get a 7-inch and an 8-inch. I mean, how different could they be? It's one It's one inch of screen, and it's yeah. diagonal, so I'm not even yeah. like... Anyway. But I thought somebody might have a, an interesting insight I, on that. I got nothing. No. Fair enough. <laughs> it makes no sense to us all. Uh, let's see. Oh, we got to talk about this. Uh, we'll, we'll move on. We'll do a, We'll do some questions and answers after this. But uh, we got to talk about iPad racial profiling. Oh, that's This crazy. is a crazy story. Uh, New York State <sighs> Attorney General and gubernatorial candidate Andrew Cuomo is investing allega investigating allegations that Apple is refusing to sell iPads to Asian Americans. Uh, last month, a Queens Assemblywoman named Grace Meng wrote to Apple, and she said her constituents uh, were upset that uh, Apple staffers had denied them iPads, and they were asking to see passports before selling them iPads. Which is just, I mean, could that possibly have happened? It just seems bizarre. Uh, so it is believed that this may stem from fears that the iPads were going to be sold on the Chinese black market, and sources have actually, uh, con the sources connected to Apple have actually said Apple had at one point instituted a questionnaire for use in iPad sales aimed at blocking illegal exports. But basically, they're racially profiling they're, possible iPad purchasers. They're right? essentially racially profiling Which that's crazy. Uh, yes, uh, I iPad sales, saying, well, they can't be sure. You might want to take it to China and sell it on the black market. Because, or you're because you look Chinese. So yeah. they were specifically calling, right. looking for people who looked, who looked a certain Chinese. way. I, I, I mean, the, the other thing, too, is this was not happening in the, you know, blowhole Montana 
iPad, uh, Apple store, because yeah, it was in New York. One. It, was, it was two different <laughs> Apple stores in Manhattan, one in Soho and one on 14th Street. These are like the flagship New York. If there's ever going to be a big Apple store, it's going to get a diverse crowd. It's going to be It's going to be the one on 14th right. Street in Manhattan. It just seems insane that they would even try. I mean, could you possibly defend this practice? No. I mean, if you were I Steve Jobs, what would you come out and say, like, Oh, why aren't you selling iPads to Asian Americans? Yeah, there's really there really it's is like, no answer to this. It's, uh, it's in just, any way acceptable. As a mass, like a company that so pays so much attention to its image and to PR. Do we know at what level this came? Uh, no, was it just no. in the store, or was it? Well, Apple has not made an official statement about it. Like a source, sort of anonymously told. I think it was the New York Post right. uh, that oh. you know. Well, we did have a questionnaire at one point to make sure people weren't going to sell these illegally. And we've heard the horror stories about people who tried to go buy like ten iPads and were then like cruelly right. rebuffed because they felt like they were sending them overseas. Uh, so it does seem fairly consistent, but no, we have no way of knowing yeah. is this actual Apple policy, and if so, whether it came from the top or like a store manager. Oh, it seems unlikely an Apple store manager would come up with this by themselves. But they did admit to having a, having a questionnaire. But they... uh, a, An anonymous source has told journalists that they did. Apple yeah. has not. I see. And Apple has admitted okay. nothing. So this, so this could be nothing. This could and be This could be a a, York... well, like people making it up and going to their councilwoman and yeah. saying this happened when it didn't happen. And the New York Post journalists. It's I don't want to that... say it was the New York Post for okay. sure. It could have been another New York page. It could have been like the Observer or something. I've seen this, so I've seen this story like, making the yeah, The story so. got out there. I mean, yeah, the story right. is definitely out there. The rumors are definitely out there. Apple has not confirmed or denied. Um, but I mean, now you've what got, do you say you've got if the, you're Apple? You've you got the say. New York State Attorney General looking into it. So obviously, it, it's there's some reason to believe that this really happened. Well, I think they. Ha I mean, it's become such a big story now. They have to look in. They have to look into it. I right. Just, you know, I'm not so sure. I just. I don't know. I have a hard time buying that. That they. That yeah, Apple would be I'm, stupid enough to do this. Could be the most boneheaded corporate move I've heard yeah. in years. I mean, just like you're gonna blanket. I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. I don't believe it happened. All right, I'll enough. be honest. Okay. Uh, one more thing I want to talk about here while we're talking about the news because this is just fascinating to me. Uh, a re the restaurant at the Hotel Ridges in North Sydney, Australia, no longer offering printed menus. Their menus are now on iPads. Uh, they had their own special app built for menu requests. You order your food from the iPad. Uh, waiters and waitresses will still bring it to you after you've ordered it on your iPad. Uh, it includes photos and expanded descriptions of each dish. Uh, you can specify how you want your meal cooked, if you want to add anything or take it away, what kind of sides you would like. It even suggests wines for you based on your, the dish that you've ordered. Uh, the app uh, may also, in the future, they say it's going to have options to modify your food based on the weather or your mood. Mood. Wow. So they will ask you, are you happy or sad, and then suggest food <laughs> based on how you're feeling. Now, uh, here's when, they, the, when they bring your order to you like oh, this, then I'll, then I'll feel nice, like I got nice. something. So. Here is the coolest part, I thought. Uh, the, the, the thing that makes it not just like stupid. Uh, the iPad will actually track the restaurant's inventory. So if they run out ah. of the fish, the fish <laughs> disappears from the app before you can even order it. Oh, wow. So it's really like interactive with the kitchen in that way, which is kind of awesome. Uh, is, 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 do you think this will take off? I mean, a restaurant's going to adopt these kinds of systems, or is this just like a ridiculous uh, gimmick? I think a lot of those iPads will start disappearing mysteriously from the uh, restaurant. <laughs> People so. are going to take the iPad sure. from the restaurant. I, they, I think they're, you know. It's hard, it's hard to sneak one of the, I, I guess know. if you're dining and dashing, you yeah. can just sort of make a break for it. I don't know. I, I, I think some of them are going to mysteriously go away. I could see it becoming... Like, I mean, that's clearly a way to get their name in the press. and get, Yes, yeah. well, we're talking about it. It's a yeah. hotel in Sydney. Um, I, I mean, I don't necessarily think with the iPad itself, but I think more, you know, five, ten years down the line, having tablet-like devices serve more and more price. Like, we, like we've seen with cell phones, makes sense, where yeah. you come in and it just automatically knows you're in a subway. What sandwich would you want? Boom, 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 boom. Anything to sort of get away with uh, minimum wage, you know, it, it's more efficient and it's cheaper than uh, you know where it would make so a lot of sense is in a sushi restaurant where you're kind of like you you see the sushi right and you're like oh mm -hmm. I don't remember what that one's called but that one you sort of drag yeah, like and drop dim it over dim sum or something yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah so you just sort of assemble your plates like you know it doesn't even have to be words it can just be pictures and, yeah no yeah. it's I mean it, it's like I you, it's you cool think about it it's cool. It is cool if I went into a restaurant and it had an iPad menu I'd be like oh my god this is yeah. all, <laughs> I, you know I take people uh, I take people uh, out there to show it off or whatever yeah. but I, I don't know there I also think there is a risk um, if all restaurants adopted this if this becomes the way of the future like you're gonna miss that human interaction on some level like I read this on a blog and all the commenters were like oh this is awesome because they always screw up my order and now everybody would get it right but 
but I don't know, it yeah. feels really kind of cold in a way and impersonal to order off of like a device. Right, it makes sense mm -hmm. in a, a subway restaurant, not a subway car. So there's a user. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, they're, 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 yeah. they're, they're joking because they're saying, it would, no, you're on a subway because the GPS... I know, be, I know. You're, on, you're I, in a subway like restaurant being, yeah. where they make delicious sandwiches. I don't know how delicious they are. Uh, but it, so it makes sense in those fast food environments where service was never much to begin with. But like, if you're going to an you know an animal or a, a wonderful restaurant in L.A., uh, yes. then no, it doesn't make any sense. And why would you do it? Why would you remove that element? Yeah, you would. You I think you would miss that on some level. That 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 element of human interaction. There's a. I'm going to. I'm going to take a pause and do a this week in movies uh, break in here a second. There's a great film uh, called Petulia that Richard Lester did. The guy who did Hard Days Night and Three Musketeers, and uh, it's uh, it has this like what the, in the '60s was the vision of the hotel of the future, and mm -hmm. everything is automated. So you go up, there's just a little kiosk, and you get your key, and then it gives you a little map, and then you go find your room, and the key or everything is like you don't ever have to interact with a person. And that was how they imagined like in the future hotels would work, and it's it's the same thing. It's like it seems really convenient, but at the same time, it's like it's incredibly impersonal cold. and it's cold. Shut off. Like yeah. he's at one point, George C. Scott, who's the star of the film, is like walking by all the other rooms, and he can hear people in the other rooms, but he never sees a human being the entire time he's in the hotel. Oh wow! And that's what that's what this made me think of is like this very isolating future world. Uh, yeah, so uh, Nunamai brings up Jacques Tati. Very similar uh, similar film in a lot of ways. Well done. He's gonna he's gonna be a big fan of this weekend. I don't, movies, know. I, I don't think the iPad menu is going to uh, cut us off from our fellow humans anytime yeah. soon. I, you know, but I, I I could I could see that happen. It, it, Take it to its logical conclusion. The iPad is so much fun, and you get so you know caught up in it that I could see it it sort of replacing things that we become used right, to. Right, but I think I mean I I'm thinking like Wawa's back east and a few other things that when I uh, there are menus that you can, where they cut out the human element where it's not an iPad but it's some you know touch based input device. Yeah, I never I never liked it. Taco Bell, the Taco yeah. Bell near where I grew up had that, where yeah. you just pick like, I want a burrito, and you <laughs> pick like a button. And, and but I think that's where, and clearly they're only using the iPad to get some little, little bit of pub. So. Definitely. Uh, this week, we, we got one more news story. It's, it's similarly topic, so I'm going to move on it. Uh, Media Week has some surprising stats on magazine reading with the iPad. You're, you're fascinated by yes. reading on the iPad, so I figured I'd share. Uh, iPad owners who downloaded uh, Zinio magazine editions, that includes Harper's Bazaar, Car and Driver, uh, they spent at least 80 minutes with each issue. According to Media Week, readers of those same magazines on desktop computers spent about half as much time. So definitely the iPad is making a difference in how people read and the, the amount of time they're willing to spend with a particular I wonder how much of that's dedicated to load time, content. though, because I don't know if you've used the Zenio app, but it's page one, two, boom. Page one, two, boom. So whereas in a magazine, uh, you're able to... I'm, I'm sure that does make a difference, but I don't know if that would double, yeah. double the amount well, of time. Did you think, consider maybe more than half the pages are ads, it's one, two, Move on. When Maybe. you move on, I whereas with whereas yeah. with a magazine, you're able to really go ads, 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 it's done. All right, I'm going to pay attention to it. Ads, 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 it's done. Whereas True. here, you would have to literally go to everyone, wait a little bit. Something so, you've said actually, I think, actually supports the opposite, which is the biggest feature of the iPad is your couch. Yeah. Right. You love searching the web without you know basically lean back on your couch, kind of you know. Right. Reading it like a paper almost. Right. Whereas before we had to be at our desks, you know, sort of hunched forward, you know, with our mouse right. and all that. It's just a lot more comfortable. So I would tend to believe people, the magazine, people who are reading magazines on the iPad will probably be on their couch. Yeah. And it's just a lot, you know, you just get more gross. Right. Right. So I, I buy it. Yeah. Yeah. Condé Nast uh, has estimated their GQ iPad app. Uh, readers spend about 60 minutes with the iPad version Ooh. versus 70 minutes with the print version. So that actually was people are spending more time with the print app, the the print version, than the iPad. It may just be that they're able to get the, through the iPad quicker, right? Uh, less looking for articles and more skimming through. I could see, I could see that one. Uh, and finally, advertisers uh, overwhelmingly say that they are still waiting for data about how much time readers are really spending on in magazine ads and how they want to deal with it. It's still basically too early for the people making the ads to tell if this is a technology they really want to invest in or if they're getting as much for their money as they are from a print version because they, they, they basically know how much time people spend looking at their ads in print. So uh, the conversion still is a waiting to be seen on the iPad. Got it. Hmm. So that is, let me see. I have some questions here. Um, SS sends me, just charming, charming name, SS. Uh, emails me with uh, right. Super they're saying it seems that 
it seems to them that developers are slow in developing iPad apps. Do you guys agree or disagree, or do you think that they're maybe misreading the situation? They say they're slow in developing. Well, I just I feel mean, like developers overall are a lot slower with iPad apps. I'm presuming then comparably the uh, iPhone apps or other maybe Android apps. Yeah, well, I don't think it's any more or less difficult to, to develop on the iPad than it is for the iPhone because it's, it's the same development kit. Right. So. Um, two big names come to mind. Yelp and Facebook don't have iPad apps. Um, and I'm wondering if it's just they don't know if they need one, if the website's you know, good enough. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the answer. Like, I, I, I read that in blogs a lot that people are complaining, um, you know, why are all of these websites taking so long, like, to come out with yeah. their new, you know, iPad apps? And I think that's a big part of it. Is like, on the iPhone, you really need one. Mo the iPhone breaks most yeah. sites that I would regularly go to. Yeah. Um, BuzzFeed being a great example of a site that really never worked right on the iPhone, and then they just now came out with an app that brings the BuzzFeed experience to the phone, right. and it works really well. They wouldn't need to do that on the iPad because BuzzFeed looks beautiful on the yeah. iPad. BuzzFeed's a better experience on the iPad than it is on the uh, desktop, I right. think. So I think, that's a, I think that's a big reason, especially something like Facebook, which is perfect on the iPad yeah. as is. You really don't need anything other than the web version. Well, so this is what, week seven or eight of yeah. iPad's existence? It's been two months. Yeah. yeah eight so um, I think we're used to there being a lot of apps because of the iPhone. Right. And I think when, if we look back in the same time frame when the iPhone first came out. There wasn't as much as we you, actually remember. Yeah, yeah. You'll find that there's actually probably a comparable speed in, you know, with which major uh, websites got their iPhone apps in the marketplace. Right. It's just that now it's, you know, seven, eight, whatever it is, however month, I can't remember how many months it is later, but since the iPhone came out, it's like, oh, it's like a year and a half, what am I talking yeah. about? So um, it's hard to sort of look back through the midst Quantify, of time, yeah. you know, looking through the lens of the seven weeks with which we've had the iPad, so. Uh, Brad Thompson writes me and asks, uh, he just bought a 64 gig iPad, he needs a case. Uh, he's a company executive, he attends meetings and conferences, and when he starts traveling, he plans on taking along a Bluetooth keyboard. So a, a case that took that into account would be great. Do you guys have any recommendations for him? Um, I really might go with, when it comes to getting the, I would do a bag, a bag that would fit the keyboard, whatever, it doesn't have to be Apple specific, and then I would get the Apple case. I can't. The Apple case has been really great. Yeah, I mean, this has I been can't. fantastic. I mean, we went yeah, over I'm this jealous. in the first or second one. episode, but yeah. the it's ability the to make it do. stand, it's durable, but it's at the same time sort of affordable. Um, I'd really go with that, buy the keyboard, then find a small bag from Timbuktu or from Chrome or someone, that, yeah. or, you know, a designer leather luxury brand yeah. that would fit both and just throw them both in there and you should be fine. That makes sense. I've actually been able to type very fast on this. You are getting, I've noticed that, that you're getting very good at uh, the typing. I'm, I'm still lagging behind. And actually, do you yeah. just use Notes? Use the regular Notes app for yeah, I, uh, type, I, for note taking? Yeah, here's what I just, if you go to my uh, screen here, I just typed this, like you saw, you guys saw me typing. So if you go to my uh, iPad, I don't know if you guys got the iPad camera up. I don't know if it's up yet or not, but. Anyway, there it um, is. Yeah, so there we go. So I, you can't, I guess you probably can't read this sentence, but um, it's all grammatically correct. And I, I, you saw me type it right here. It was very, yeah. very fast. Very fast. So, um, I actually have gotten used to this keypad, and I, I sort of don't feel like I need an external keypad, to be honest with you. Could you, I mean. Yeah, Zach, Zach yeah. you had a thought on that? Yeah, I mean, when it first came out, I thought, okay, I'll get this, and then I need to get the Bluetooth. Uh, keyboard as well, or maybe the dock. But after a couple times using it, I mean, if you can type, you can type really well on that. And I have the same case that you guys do, um, which I had to wait for it to be sold in Canada. But I mean, with that kind of ramp raise keyboard, it's almost like my keyboard is at my desk. And I can type just as fast on this as I can on um, a traditional keyboard. I mean, I wouldn't waste the money unless you practice for a while and realize, okay, I can't type that quick on it. And if he's gonna go on an airplane, He's going to prop up his iPad and put the keyboard somewhere. Yeah, I mean that might be a well, little yeah. bit difficult. The only that's one of the reasons why I said I would get a bag that you can use multi-purpose. That said, would you write like I I you know I, I know use this all the me. time. Would you write a book on it? Um, if you'd asked me that a couple of weeks ago, I would have said no. I would now say that I might write a chapter. Uh, that's, a, that's bold. That's but a bold I'm thing. pretty. I'm, I've actually just in the last couple of weeks, my my typing speed has increased it's, to where it's almost equivalent of a regular keyboard. It's not so much. I mean, I I do. I did a test. I do like 95 on a keyboard and something like 
was like at 60 or something on the iPad. Still, that's pretty good. Right. I mean, yeah. And it's not bad where, where I would really, really miss a keyboard and maybe even a mouse and maybe it would have to move to the desktop would be in editing. And I when I notice yeah. a paragraph that's four different. up and I go up, 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 yeah. edit, whereas here I kind of have to like hit it right and then delete yeah, it. But so, that's less yeah. the keyboard than the mouse because you're really, right. you're really mousing your way As around. a programmer, I... I'm used to having ah, like throwing right. the mouse away, and I know all the keyboards. <laughs> As a writer, that, so, I yeah. Mouse around all the time. <laughs> uh, so it, it might be worth having the Bluetooth keyboard. That said, if you're on an airplane, you definitely want to learn how to type on the thing, no yep. matter what. Even if you do use the keyboard for a long form uh, format. Yeah. Yep. Well, I guess that's it for questions. Uh, I don't see any others in the chat room. Zach, unless you've got something burning you want to run by us before we wrap up here. I'm just, just curious. Why don't you use a, a case lock? Uh, you know, I just, I'm it's Lazy. pure laziness. <laughs> I, uh, I got a case with it, and I don't like it, so I don't use it. Um, and I've just never gone back to the Apple Store since and gotten, I'm very busy. I'm a busy man. Uh -huh. I don't know. I just haven't had do time. You wanna, uh, uh, do you want to show the, the This Weekend app? Oh, yeah, yeah. Before we before we wrap it up, we did want to give all of the uh, sure. thousands of people watching right now, <laughs> all the teeming throngs of fans, uh, a sneak preview. This is this is very exciting. Yes. You guys are the first people in the public to ever see this. This is the This Week in iPad app. It will be debuting how soon, Mark? Um, well, we're working out the kinks. <laughs> we're working on that, but I, I, I'm hoping in the next few weeks. We're working out some of the kinks. I, I think we'll be in the next few weeks. So anyway, yeah. so this is a work in progress. This is not available in the App Store, obviously. Don't go looking for it yet, but it will be available soon. And it's only partially working here, so just bear with me as we. Uh, well, you can pull up like an episode. So reasons. here's the This Week in iPad, uh, mm. you know, right. page. You can go immediately oh, to an episode. Go. So actually, it's pulled in the latest episodes right here. Right. Um, th these weren't here actually earlier. So this is the one you guys just did last week. And it, it has, actually. it'll have, you know, you can't hear sound on there. There you go. I just turned it up. Hello again. There you go. <laughs> who's that? Who's that handsome devil? <laughs> so now if I want to make lawn larger. Am I wearing I the same that. shirt? No, okay, it's a different shirt. It's a different shirt. <laughs> like, okay, actually, better. it might be the same shirt. No, it's not. Anyway. That's my that's my Stargate uh, SG-1 shirt. Oh, uh, okay. This is my uh, Jinx yes. Army combat shirt, so it's totally different. Wow, yeah, so if you want to... Uh, man. So basically, we're able to... Uh, oops, I guess it's not going to let me do that. Um, basically, if you go to these, these old episodes, you can sort of just go through them like this. Um, one of the things that's nice here is the, uh, the show notes appear down you know in this section below and typically yeah. a lot of, which is really nice because the links are this in there. is this is my personal favorite feature so, so watch this so I'm gonna turn this on so you so the video is actually going um, let's turn it down so who's that clown I don't know who that is so you're watching let's the show. episode look at my hair anyway um, if you yeah you're watching the show you click on a link it opens a browser. Well, you don't have to leave the show. You're still listening to the show. That's right. So the show's still going in the background. So you could follow along, basically, with what we're talking about and read the blog posts and everything without actually leaving the app, which on the iPad is a pretty significant uh, development. It's almost like multitasking. It, so, it's yeah. close. It's multitasking done right. There you go. Steve, you can use that. Yeah. Uh, so Nunamai in the chat room asking, is this going to be just on demand, or would you actually be streaming live shows into this? Uh, good question. Um, initially, we're still working on the streaming portion of it. Um, so it will initially just be uh, old archived episodes. Um, but they will appear very quickly. Uh, well, they'll be the as soon show. as we yeah. archive them. So the next day for most of them, or yeah, that or even, day. even that same day. That so same day, cases, yeah. Morning so. shows by that evening, you'll be able to get them in the in the app. But yeah. eventually, there are plans to actually feed live shows into it. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there will eventually be a tab, and it may be in the uh, 1.1 1 .1 release. Right. Won't be the so 1 .1. that is something we definitely are keyed into, and I would love nothing more because probably the number one comment we get about this show. Uh, aside from, you know, more of me, right. is uh, yeah. that people really want to be able to watch the live show on their iPad, that people are frustrated that, because right now we're using, you know, Ustream or other Flash right. players, and they don't have HTML5, and you can't actually watch the live show right. on the iPad, which is ironic, I know, and unfortunate, but it's not our fault. Yeah. Please blame Steve Jobs. Is that app going to be just available in the American iTunes store, or will it be in both the American and the international one? I don't know how that works necessarily. Um, I know I'm limited to some of the apps that I can get. Yeah, we're going to uh, make it available. I don't mind. I have both accounts. So. 
<laughs> well, we're going to make it available in as many places as possible. Um, I, I, I don't actually know what's involved in, in making it available in Canada, but uh, certainly our intent is to make it widely available immediately as soon as we're done with it. Nuno Mai also asks, are there solutions? This is something that's always interesting to me. I'm, I'm glad this question got asked. Uh, what would be some oh, of the potential solutions actually, for... Sorry. Uh, in answer to your question, I just, I just thought of the answer. The answer is that it will be available immediately because it's free. Uh, there were some issues with paid apps in the Canadian uh, App Store. Uh, I believe that's the only restriction. Uh, that I know of. Yeah. yeah. So I believe all free apps, I, I have to double check my facts on this, but I'm pretty sure free apps will be, are immediately available in both places. Awesome. So, Sorry, I didn't mean so to yeah, Nuno, Go Nuno Mai is asking a question that I actually have myself, which is if we did decide we're going to choose uh, an embeddable player based solely on if it's available on the iPad, are there such options available? Does that even exist? Uh, to live stream in a non-Flash player. Ah. Uh, um, Brightcove? Yeah, I know. I, you know, honestly, I have to talk to Derek about this to be. Well, we I don't know have to have an answer on, right now. Yeah, they're working. They're, they Studio are working Derek on the live. Studio Derek says yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So Derek does know the answer to it. So, and that, as we suspected, there is a, there is a special player that you would have to use. Yeah. So, yeah. Basically. Uh, all right. Well, I want to announce before we wrap up here, we have a winner of right. our uh, iPad or I, Apple Store gift card. Uh, it is at Purdy BR, uh, Brandon Purdy. He's a college student from Ontario, Canada, a fellow Canuck. Yeah, Canada. Go Canada. Yeah. They're, they're Canada apparently, show. The Canadians <laughs> can't get enough of this week in iPad. It's uh, go, you know, go, go Canucks. Two out of 27 million people. Go Blue Blanc et Rouge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so th thank you to uh, Brandon for, for letting everybody know. Uh, you know about, about the show and tweeting everybody we will we've got your info uh roberta's got it out there we will be sending you a 50 dollars apple store gift card thanks a lot for watching thank you to everybody at the 10,000 different meetups being held the largest i don't think we set the guinness record the largest simultaneous meetup uh, around the world in history we we just beat out the million man march it's the largest meetup we've ever had it's the it is i could say it's the largest live meetup we at the this weekend corporation have had thus far. Uh, so thank you all for being here. Tomorrow night, if you had an awesome time with us tonight, just wait. Tomorrow night's going to be, Tomorrow night will be big. well bigger. This is not uh, a, no, this is not a joke. Tomorrow no, night no, will it's be really not. Big. I'm being totally honest. We have a startup. This weekend, startups meet up tomorrow. Over 150 cities, uh, and this one is actually pretty well this organized. Yeah. Uh, over 15 different cities will be calling in to the show live, including Santiago, Chile, which is exciting. That's, that's really awesome. That's a far-flung and exotic destination. <laughs> So that's tomorrow at 6 p.m. Pacific time. Definitely tune into that. That's going to be, be like one of those AT&T You Will commercials. That's going to be an awesome show. And you know Jason, host of This Week at Sarps, is going to enjoy the ability to <laughs> Larry King style. Cut his mic. We're going. All right. Oklahoma City, you're on. You know he's going to love Defiance, that. Defiance, Ohio. Yeah. He's, yeah, yeah. he's definitely going to get into it. Uh, I, I highly recommend watching that. It's going to be, gonna a, good be one. a very entertaining show. Uh, so do definitely tune into that. You can normally catch us doing this week in iPad on Thursday afternoons at 4 p.m. Uh, Jacob uh, Birch we'll here there. with me every week. This week we're uh, we got a good guest. Uh, I don't. Know, I think I'm, I think I'm a lot. At Maker, the CEO of the company that makes AppMaker.com, which is a service that lets you basically design your own iPad apps. So that's going to be a really interesting discussion. Uh, and we're going to talk about uh, different monitor, touchscreen, different ways to sort of integrate, control your computer, control and, and modify your computer with your iPad. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and interact there. So that's going to be. Uh, that's going to be awesome, and uh, so join us for that. And uh, thanks for having your iPad meetups with us. And thanks to Zach up in uh, Vancouver. Great talking with you, Zach. Uh, we appreciate it. You want to give yourself one more shout out for joining us here on the show? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Thanks for thanks for having me on. This was my first time, so I mean, this was really exciting. I've been watching uh, you guys for a while, so I'm glad I was on. And uh, I see there's no place for tomorrow, so maybe I'll uh, jump in and uh, offer up the restaurant again tomorrow night. Sure, for, if you can, uh, if you can get some some people there, uh, we will feature. Apparently, you there's get... seven people interested in it right now. Oh, in the Vancouver uh, twist. In the Vancouver. Up? Uh, yeah, for the twist tomorrow. So. Uh, so you know what? We'll we'll have Jason and I. We'll tweet it out. We'll see if we can get you guys uh, five, ten more people to show up, uh, make it a decent sized gathering. Sounds good. All right, awesome. Thanks, right. Zach, and thanks everyone thanks, else. Guys. We will see you on Thursday for another episode of This Week in iPad. <laughs>